Welcome to the penultimate installment of this mini-series on Clam AV. In this video, we're going to talk about several additional features of Clam AV. Whitelisting, or false positive signatures, ignoring signatures, and finally, setting up new file types to control the behavior of Clam AV. No matter the tool you use, there will be false positives. That's simply the nature of malware detection and threat hunting. It's how you handle those that makes a difference. If you need to submit a sample to a vendor, wait for them to validate and confirm your sample as a false positive, and then update their tools to ignore that sample, you end up being in a situation where legitimate traffic or files are being blocked. As such, you need ways to say, this specific thing is okay, or we don't care about this particular definition. These sound like very similar things, but are quite different. In the first case, you are only allowing that specific sample through, while in the second, you are essentially removing the definition from things you act on. In ClamAV, these are handled by .fp or .sfp files for false positives to allow specific samples through using the hash signature format, and .ign2 files, ignore, to ignore a particular signature. To add a false positive, simply generate a hash signature for the sample in question and place it in the appropriate false positive file. For MD5 signatures, you would add to a false positives.fp file in your signature database, while for SHA-1 or SHA-256, you would add that to false positives.sfp. For example, if we wanted to mark test.php as a false positive using the MD5 format, we would generate the MD5 using SIGTOOL and then add it to the false positive.fp file. And you would want to leave the file name in place as the signature name, so that way you know that this is the specific file that you're looking to mark as a false positive. And with that in place, we can just scan it again in this particular case, the MD5 of the original file was excluded. However, the MD5 of the normalized file was not. If we run SIGTOOL MD5 on the normalized file, we get a different hash. And we see that this is the hash that was detected as being malicious. So what we can do is mark this as test PHP normalized and now if we scan test.php again, we should get back that the file is okay. Lo and behold, it is. So you need to make sure that you get both the original file as well as any normalized hashes in there in order to fully mark something as a false positive. Similarly, if you wanted to use the SHA-1 signature, you simply use the SHA-1 argument or the SHA-256 argument, and then these would go in a .sfp file. On the other hand, if you decide that there's a signature that just doesn't work for you, for example, a third-party signature that's too broad for your environment, say the mytest.any.php.0, which is just the PHP tag, if we take a look at this test PHP, it does nothing malicious, but we have a signature that is detecting it as being the mytest.any.php0. If we wanted to ignore this because we've decided that this signature is too broad, but this was a third-party signature and not one of our own, what you would want to do is add this to a false positive .ign2 file, and you would want to exclude the .unofficial from it. And now if we scan this file, we see that it is no longer being detected by this signature. In this situation, we are ignoring every signature that comes in with the name mytest.any.php.0. Alternatively, you can add the signature name along with the MD5 hash of the entire signature line from the database to the .ign2. This will ignore this signature as long as the MD5 hash of the signature line itself matches the hash you have in there. For example, here we have mytest.any.php.0 and this hash. That hash came from finding the signature, only taking the signature definition without the file that it's in, but then this also has a carriage return at the end that we don't want included in the MD5, so we echo this out without the new line into SIGTOOL to generate the hash that we have in here. Now, you could grep for this as well, but again, you would need to make sure that you don't include the new line. But 
Occasionally, you will end up with something in CLD or CVD that you don't have easy access to just run a grep on in order to get it. So that's why I used SIGTOOL to find it and then printed it out. Now, if that signature should ever change for whatever reason and the hash no longer matches, say for instance this was updated to include white space after the PHP tag, now that signature will start to match. And this is useful in case you provide feedback to a third party to say, hey, this signature is hitting on false positives, and the third party decides to simply update the signature rather than create a brand new signature. The last topic concerns file type detection. Say, for example, you've gone through the trouble of creating normalized signatures for some malicious PHP files, but then you find the exact same code in some files that are detected as HTML. Rather than despairing about having to write yet more signatures that handle code in HTML normalized content, as well as in ASCII normalized content, you can instead write a file type magic signature, or an FTM signature, that says, if you detect PHP, then treat it like HTML, regardless of whether or not there are HTML tags in it. To do that, you need to create a .ftm file, and this file will contain the following fields. The type of magic that you're performing, and there are three types. Zero, to perform a direct memory comparison of the bytes for the file type. One, to perform a body-based signature comparison. And four, to perform a direct memory comparison for partition types. Next, is the offset at which to match the magic bytes. Here, we're matching anywhere within the file, but this could be a specific byte or byte range as well. The third is the magic bytes to match. In other words, what are you looking for? In this case, we're looking for a less than, a question mark, and then an upper or lowercase p, an upper or lowercase h, and another upper or lowercase p. The final required field is the name. Here we've simply said PHP as the name. The field after that is what the original file was detected as. Most of the time you'll want to use the any here as a wildcard so that way this will take place for every kind of file that ClamAV is running against. But you could limit this to, for example, GIF files or any graphics files and then the last required field is what to do. Again, this can be any of these file type values here, and if you pick something that is normalized, then that can chain the normalization that ClamAV will do. So for example, since we're doing PHP here, if it's found in a file that's not HTML, but is normalized, so ASCII in other words, this FTM signature will change the normalization from an ASCII normalized to HTML normalized. To see how this works, here we have a test4.php, and if we run clamscan against this, we will see that this is recognized as ASCII text, and it has been saved to a normalized file here. If we take a look at this file, this has been ASCII normalized, and we know that because this is a single file that's clamav-hash.tem. If, however, we put our file type magic signature into place and rerun the test, we now see that it was recognized as ASCII text, but then it was matched to a signature for file type PHP, and instead of being ASCII normalized, we see that it is running the scan HTML. If we go into this directory here, we see the no comment and the no tags files that are associated with HTML normalization. So this is one way that you can then write a signature for HTML normalized PHP without having to worry about whether or not the file was originally detected as HTML or not. If we take a look at test 5, for example, this has an HTML tag in it already. And if we were to scan this, what we'll see is that similarly, it recognizes ASCII text and then PHP, and it normalizes it as HTML. But if we remove our FTM signature and rescan, what we see is it's detected as ASCII, but then it matches HTML data, and it again uses the scan HTML. So as long as there's an HTML header, it will be normalized as an HTML file. But if it doesn't have the HTML header, it gets normalized as ASCII. And as noted before, this can cause problems with white space in our signatures. Hopefully, this video has illustrated the usefulness of false positives, ignore lists, and making your own file type magic.
In the final video, we will briefly touch on bytecode signatures and Yara rules to conclude this series on Clam AV. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live, and leave a comment if you have a question or feedback.